it's the kind of a puzzle I love. It's like deciphering hieroglyphics, which I enjoy. I uh, spent a lot of time for the fun of it. There's a codex, a Mayan codex, called the Dresden Codex, which is one of three books left from the hundreds of thousands of books that were extant at the time when the Spanish conquered Mexico. This is the only good one, it's the Dresden Codex. I knew that that had been translated in 1850 or something by somebody, but I love puzzles, and I thought to myself, suppose I was Forsterman, who was the one who translated it, got a hold of this thing for the first time, what would I do? You know, what did he do? I didn't have to, I, I made believe that I was in the same position. It wasn't very difficult because there were bars and dots and pretty soon you guess they are numbers and pretty soon you find out five dots is equivalent to a bar and, and so on. And then after that you notice periodicities and funny symbols which are presumably names of days that go like our week does in a period uh, because they were the numbers of the days and the names of the days. Etc. Okay, you work all that out, and then there'd be some very, very puzzling numbers, a whole lot of calculations involving multiples of 584, and you can't figure that out. What, what the heck that is? And you get the idea. Well, maybe it's an astronomic thing they're observing. And you discover when I went to the library in the, at Caltech and looked up astronomical numbers the planets, but from the point of view of the Earth, Venus appears in the same position in the sky again after 584 days, after 583.92 days. And uh, you have to kind of understand the orbits, but you can see that there would be a period when Venus would be a morning star about 230 days, and a period when it's an evening star, another period of about the same amount. But the, the transition from the morning to the evening star is very quick at one part of the orbit when it's on our side of the sun, you pass it quickly. And when it's on the far side, it's a relative angle motion, it's very slow. So it would look like a longer period where you can't see it because it's too close to the sun. At that time, when you see all this, you see all this fit, and you know all of a sudden that you're reading about Venus and that they had made all these observations. You get one heck of an excitement, just like a physics discovery or something. Even though I know it's all been discovered, I didn't know it, that's all. I was doing it for the fun of it and see what I could discover. Discovery clips numbers that I finally figured out with the periods of the moon and clips prediction tables and things in this thing. It was very exciting, and that's an example. But what I really mean by uh, deciphering hieroglyphics is more like cryptograms and puzzles uh, where you have, you know there's sense behind this damn thing. The problem is to extract it with whatever tools and clues you've got. And that's lots of fun. KPFK Los Angeles, it's time for Mario Cassetta with Many Worlds of Music. Ralph, how do you happen to come by this record, which is a jewel? Um, I wrote to the author of a book about Tuva, Sevian Weinstein, and he did most of his ethnographic work on Tuva. And uh, he sent out this amazing record. <laughs> Most people I talk to think that there is a flute or some other instrument accompanying the singer at the same time, and they're really astonished when they hear that it's one person making both of those tones. As they're singing, there's a kind of a whistle that develops on top of the singing. 
And so it sounds like a man with two voices. Ralph has this car, which has a license plate say Tuba. For the fun of it, we had the car outside on the street in front here. We got some friends of ours to take our picture, trying to push this automobile as if it's kind of run out of gas or something, up the hill. We're faking, of course, that we're pushing so hard. And we got a picture, so we sent it to Undar and said, see how hard we're working to get the Tuva, it's Tuva or bust, or something like that. <laughs> That's a joke. And uh, he was delighted and took it to the local newspaper, in Kizil newspaper, and they uh, printed the picture with a caption that I think we had written, actually. Somewhere along the line, we found out that botanists, a group of botanists who were able to go to Tuva, it looked to us that they were counting the leaf buds or whatever you do when you're a botanist. And uh, we were kind of disappointed that these guys had gotten there ahead of us and also that they hadn't fully appreciated <laughs> the wonderful place we imagined that they were going to. But we got from them the idea but the reason it was easy to go is that they had something to do. So we had to find some kind of a thing that would officially make sense that we had to go to Tuva. Then Ralph found out that there was going to be a great throat singing contest and con conference for a week, somewhere way out in the west edge of uh, Mongolia, right near Tuva, you know. It was, it was a part of Mongolia you don't ordinarily go, and it was right near too. <laughs> of course, uh, there were various fan fantasy dreams of our uh, donning old robes and uh, old rags and so on, because we'd meet these guys. We'd meet the Tuvans in Mongolia, and then they'd carry us back in their wagons, <laughs> and we'd see a part of Tuva. <laughs> Maybe, okay? <laughs> I know we were all excited to go to this, we see, even if we didn't get to Tuva, that would have been interesting, too. You have to understand that every plot, even though it was a high chance of failure, as far as the ultimate aim was concerned, would always turn out, we suppose, to be a big adventure. After all, it ain't everybody that goes across to visit the Throat Singing Conference in the western part of Mongolia. So we tried to join up and sign up for this and get everything ready. And uh, there was a change in the government, and the cultural, the minister of culture changed. And he decided they weren't going to have a <laughs> throat singing conference in Mongolia. So that fell through.